today we're going to talk about how Alicia has gone from making two grand a month, um, running a general kind of fat loss online training program to making five grand a month as a super niche yeah. program, helping women get back on their feet after surgeries and health complications. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Hello. Pretty good that, isn't it? Very good. Do you ever think you'd be coaching that kind of like? Never. What was your worry about it when you started? I didn't think I knew. It was like imposter syndrome. I was like, I can't do that. Why? Exactly why. Like Charles, my coach would be like, why? And I'd say, uh, I don't know. And then I'd say, but what would people think? And it was very much, again, just worrying about other people's opinions of me. Um, and then after my surgery, so in 2023, on my ovaries to remove a cyst, which was an emergency, um, I was like, I need to coach women who have had surgeries, get them back on the feet, especially as well if they've got women's health issues. Usually do, like with the surgeries that we have. Mm. Um, it took a lot to get there, a lot of like um, pushing from Charles. Um, and then I just went for it in the new year at the end of January. So I'm really glad I did. What were the biggest things you were struggling with before you started? FBU? Yeah. Running a business because I was confident in coaching. I knew I could coach people, but I would be at my laptop or just have all this time on my hands before joining and be like, what do I do? Like, what do I actually do? Mm -hmm. And I'd see other people like going to the gym, rushing back for calls and doing this. And I was like, there's something I am not doing and it's worrying me because like BBA is my dream. My business is my dream and it's not something I want to fail because of me. Mm -hmm. And then that's why I joined. So you just felt like you were just sat there all day, not really? Yeah, I wasn't doing enough. And it was like... I do always wonder what people do when they're making like one and two grand a month. Because really, yeah. it's like how many clients did you have at the time? I think it was like eight, nine. Yeah. Ten, like what do you actually... Right, let's say you've got 10, but like what, yeah. what do you actually do all day if you've only got 10 clients? I'm thinking back. What did you do? So I do check-ins on one day. No, I split it over two days. So I'd have you split like... split 10 clients yeah, over two days. Yeah, but you've got to think. And for those listening... Like you think that's it, you know, and you think, oh yeah, I'll start splitting it. What if I get more people? I'll start splitting it. Um, so that's what I did. Um, I go to the gym, see friends, do a bit of content. Leisure. Yeah. And I was like, this isn't normal. And I knew it wasn't right. And I also- To be fair there. though, some people would take two grand for that. No. Uh, yeah, two grand is great. I'm not trying to yeah. sit here and be like, oh, that's not enough money. Because it is. But- the goals I have, it's not, it's not. It's something that I want to keep growing because I don't just want this to be a, oh, I had a business for a few months. I want it to be something that I can help my family, future family, myself and enjoy life and build a business empire. Like sitting here now, like I feel like Kim K. Have you seen the video? I'm sorry, going on a tangent. I've seen the video of Kim K. And she's really young and she's like, I'm going to say no, this, but carry on with the story. I'm going to be famous. Have you seen it? I feel you have, Neve. Yeah, she says it and she's like 18 and I look at her. Get a tape of this because I hope you do so you can see me when I'm famous and old and you remember me. Okay, we're gonna do I'm this beautiful little girl. This is going to be me now. <laughs> but you, you're going to be Kim K. 100%. But I'm with that, like I was just, I had a lot of anxiety. And I think if anyone's listening who is like starting out, you're a coach, you're doing like, I don't know, zero to 2K. And you're thinking, I'm not doing enough. It's probably because you're not. And I wasn't. Um, and I was very anxious, but I didn't know what to do. Um, so yeah, got to a point, I saw your stuff. I don't know when I started seeing your content. I think I just heard about you like, as you do in the industry, um, I followed you and I was like, oh, actually there is more and how much should people make? And I didn't know that was even possible. Mm. So seeing that, seeing how other people and coaches that were in your program were doing, who actually seemed like nice people as well. They weren't just like, money grabbing and that, that, it was nice to see there was coaches who actually cared for their clients, wanting to help more people, but also have a business. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I was very in the mind frame of I'm a coach and I wasn't a business owner. I didn't even know what that looked like. So yeah. What were the big things that changed for you then when you started? It was a massive step up. Um, even just like, I remember there was an exercise and it was still on the program, but, um, your avatar. And yeah, it's still there. Yeah. So stuff like that where you just 
map out who you help. And I'd even struggle with that. And I was like, right, that's what you need to work on. Um, so that helped a lot. Even um, how to not be emotionally reactive. Because in the past, say if like a client wasn't happy, we all have it. I would take it so personally. I'd be like, my business is a failure. I'm going to be like, <laughs> I'm going to be back where I was. Like, I'm such a loser. I do that all the time. And so literally I'd do this and the business would do this as well. Mm -hmm. So now it's more like, yeah, you know? Um, so like, of course, if there is an issue, I handle it like a business owner now and not just like a person who's like a one woman army and getting really worried. Yeah, so yeah that's massive yeah getting reactive to stuff like that is a really yeah. quick way to really hate your business yeah 100 percent um and just how did you, how did you develop pause. that kind of how did i um is that through just being in a community with other people was it any particular like chats that you had like what was the process of you kind of developing that thicker skin with it to be fair i think it's something um you put in the facebook group where you were like, you've got to remember you are a business. Because I think I asked, yeah, I had someone asking um, for a refund and it wasn't like a valid reason. They just wanted their money back. And I got really, really like affected by it. And I was like, oh, why is this happening? Like, is it something I've done? And it was nothing I did. And you were just like, look, people will do this. Like, it's not always going to be like sunshines and rainbows and easy clients, you are going to have people who just want to kind of like do you over. Um, and it was almost seeing the world like a bit more maturely. Yeah. That's what really helps. I'm just very much like. It is, it is tough. You will get it all the time as well. Like I don't yeah. think there's anything you can ever do to stop it. Like other than being really tight on your sales process. But then if you're that tight, <laughs> you're going to lose out yeah. on people that could potentially do really well. So exactly, it can be a bit of a struggle. What yeah, it was the... seeing I was oh. over sorry, it was seeing I was overreacting a lot to it because when I read your comment, I then messaged that client back and I was like, Oh, like, you know, with what you've signed, I don't do refunds and she, you know, she just wanted like to go on a holiday and she's like, Oh yeah, no worries, Liz. And I was like, Oh, okay. Sound. And I was like, I didn't need to waste that much energy in overthinking something when really I could have just taken a minute and then just handled it professionally. Yeah. Um, so I try and do that now and I'm a lot better at that. Cool. Um, with the growth of the business, what was the what was the transition like from your old niche of doing the fat loss stuff to the new stuff and how did so that So hard. Um, yeah, I wanted to quit so many times because it was tough because you go from doing a niche that you're comfortable with, you know, you'll get, inquiries and um, of course you have to like work and work for those leads but then to go from that to cold turkey because it's not as simple as going from coaching general population to then my new niche which is like they've had surgeries they've had women's health issues you've got to completely change your profile you've got to completely change how you speak it's a long process so I found it super tough mm. um yeah, that's me being honest. It wasn't easy. How long did it take? To fully transition. Yeah. Oh, How long did it take once you like properly went for it? Because I know there was a period where you're like... In between. Yeah, you kind of half did it and half didn't. But once you decided like, right, I'm going to change it. Like, what was the time period before it really started to like pick back up again? So it was January, end of Jan to like April. It was very steady. But also, like, I was feeling like I was hitting my head against mm. a brick wall. Um, but then in literally going back to the drawing board, moving things around, it was April to May. That was like, we've done yeah. it. Um, so it wasn't that long, but that's just not forgetting. Like, in between that period, there's so much self-doubt. There's so much worry. Um, yeah, you drag your feet on it, don't you, really? Like you start to post a bit of content and then if it doesn't make any sales or like people don't come through, you're like, mm -hmm. ah, it's not going to work. I'll just go back to the other stuff. And yeah, there's always this seesaw bit. Yeah. And then I was like, no, we don't do that now, Liz. Like, come on. Mm. And I'd also have to like speak to myself um, very straight to the point. Like, look, if you want to coach this niche and they see your page now, they're not going to buy because you've not put enough content. You need to put like 
um, posts out there to show that you do know what you're talking about. So even now we're in August, there's people who are booking calls and like, oh my God, I saw that video you did. And I was like, I posted that in February. Mm. So people need to remember like, you need to, I don't know if earn your stripes is the right word, but kind of just show you do know what you're doing and understand it's not going to be a quick transition if you want to do it correctly. Um, so yeah. How do you feel about the business now that it's really starting good. to take off again? Really good. Um, it's what gets me up in the morning. Whereas before I struggled because I felt there was something missing, especially before joining FBU. I was so anxious because I wasn't doing the right things. It became like, um, yeah, just a heaviness. Whereas now I love it. Um, I love seeing my clients, like one of my clients, um, Alexandra, she had a myomectomy. So that's where it's a major surgery to remove fibroids from your uterus. And it was major. She had so many complications. To so then joining me, she was 10 weeks post the surgery. She's been in the program six months and now she's at the gym. She just got married. She's worn the wedding dress of her dreams. And I'm just like, I can't believe, do you know what I mean? I'm like, wow. So she got married in um, Curacao in like the Caribbean, Venezuela type island. I don't know whereabouts it is properly. Um, and I was just bawling. So yeah, it's it's really worth it. And that's why I wanted to do it. I wanted to help people. Um, of course, it's amazing. And I'm so blessed that I can build a business from that. But the main foundation is I want people to be happy yeah. when coming to me. And like even because I was doing like monthly calls this month where touch base, have a real big conversation and strategize next steps with my clients. And the underlying theme was, I feel a part of something at BBA. And I'm like, oh, yeah, nailed it. You know, it's it's lovely. Like it's such a great feeling, especially when I'm 24 now. So it was 19 when I was like, I want to launch Body by Alicia Coaching. Took a long time to do it, a lot of self-doubt and et cetera. But yeah, I'm like, wow. Yeah, I'm really proud. What would you say to people that are a bit like you, that are a bit timid about going forward with it, mm. like not thinking about whether to give it their all? Like what would your advice be to them? I would say to people, if you were like me, where you know this business is like, it's your life, it's your dream, don't stop. I think speaking to a lot of people or even people I know, it's like, they've stopped when it's got tough. And I'm like, that's the best bit when it is tough. And I think you've got to have that mindset shift where if something isn't working, you've got to almost get excited because it's like, right, figure it out. And then you're even closer. And then you're even closer. So just boss up and just make it happen. That's what I would say. Um, so it's not going to be easy. And I think even if you follow, like, I'm a massive fan of Conor McGregor. And if you've like followed his journey, it was tough. It's like, even like when I wanted to give up coaching, like whilst I was making the life pack program, I was switching, tran transitioning niches. I wanted to quit coaching so many times um, cause nothing was working. And I'd just be like, oh, timing beats speed, precision beats power, that's from Conor McGregor. But precision beats power and timing beats speed. And that's what you saw there. Um, so I'm just like, come on. Do you know what I mean? And even Michael Jordan, like, make it happen. You've just got to do it. So you love I think, a quote, you don't, yeah? I do. And it's like, look at these people. They've not had it easy. They've not just literally said, I want to be a basketball star. And then you're Jordan. So just get a grip and just crack on. That's what I'd say. And then what would you say about people that are on the edge about joining a business coaching program like ours? I would do it because for me, if you're sat there, and you've got your business and you're helping people, but you know that you could help so many more people because you have got what it takes. You need to be mature enough to say you don't know what to do. And that's where I was at, whereas you guys did. And I think what was great is as much as you were pushing me, you allowed me to still grow as a business owner. Um, because when I joined, I wasn't a business owner. I thought I was, but I wasn't. Whereas now I am and it's it's a huge step up. Um, so I would do it. I think you need to learn from people who know more. Um, and yeah, I would recommend it to anyone. Thank you very much. And where people can find you if they want to have a look at how your business is going? On Instagram at Alicia underscore BBA. So at A-L-Y-C-I-A underscore BBA. Thank you very much.